right, and here we are. So officially welcome to what I titled Learning Geospatial Workflows with ArcGIS Pro. So this is a special workshop that the uh, CSU Geospatial Centroid is doing for uh, you guys in CLTL. And John Salerno set that up. Thank you, John. Let me move this as well. Okay, um, so what we have, we have a whole, whole bunch of stuff. We have these slides, which are located here. Here's the link, now that you can get to the link in a video, but it's in the chat as well. So um, you can refer to the chat for that if you wanna look at the slides. And you have two instructors for today. So you have myself, um, Elizabeth, not Josh, and then Josh, uh, we'll introduce ourselves in just a minute. So the idea here is to give you the, just an, an overview of GIS and kind of get you started with a, a lot of the specific tasks that you said that you needed to do. So we sent out that survey last month about what types of operations do you need to do for GIS, what type of um, you know, tasks and things you wanna learn. So we tried to tailor each day to cover each of those topics. So we have today and Wednesday, 1 to 4.30, and then Friday will be kind of a follow-up and discussion, tie up any loose ends, any additional questions that you think of over the next couple of days, we can cover those. We can go into more detail on anything you want or, or different topics as well. So the basic idea is for today, uh, the goal will be to create a web map for Rocky Mountain National Park. A few of you mentioned that you want to learn how to make a web map and show your data on top of just other kind of background data. So we'll show you how to do that and we'll start in ArcGIS Pro and we'll get into it that way. We'll work with the data, we'll learn how to build that map and then publish it to a web map. We'll learn how to create our own new data. A couple of you mentioned things about um, needing to create boundaries and like digitize or trace boundaries and create new data as well as looking for existing data. So we'll cover those things and we'll get a whole bunch of data ready and then we'll go to a web map and we'll publish it and we'll configure pop-ups so that you could just share your map with a link and then someone else could just click on things and see all the attributes. So that's kind of the goal for today. And we'll kick it off with an overview of GIS Basics and also ArcGIS Pro. Uh, so let me take a look here if I can. No, I cannot, how do I do that? There. Um, so just with a show of hands or typing into the chat, how many of you, um, how many of you are like really brand new to GIS? So you can, yeah, for those of you with a webcam on, you literally raise your hand. Um, all right, so we will go over the basics of what GIS is and what it can do, and then also the basics of the software. And the software that we'll be using today will be ArcGIS Pro for the most part, which is a desktop application which is why we have remote desktop to get to that so that we don't have to install it ourselves. And then uh, we'll also be using an online platform called ArcGIS Online, which is just browser-based, but it lets you do a lot of the same types of things with adding layers, doing symbology, doing analysis, and then making a map to share, but it'll be an interactive map. So we'll be learning a little bit about both of those. And hopefully between today and Wednesday and a little bit on Friday, you'll have a good, starting off point to do more on your own. And then sometimes it's just getting a little bit of knowledge so you know what can be done and what's possible and where to go from there. So that will be today with the web mapping stuff. And then on Wednesday, we'll be again, kind of getting more into pro and working with data, but then focusing on analysis. And I think that was the number one thing in the survey that we put out that you wanted to learn about was spatial analysis, how to answer simple questions. So we'll do that, that will be the bulk of day two on Wednesday. And then at the end, again, kind of wrapping it up with how to share those results, how to export the data, how to share it as a table, um, how to put it in a web map, how to make a map PDF, like a map layout as a PDF. So those are the things that we're gonna cover. Um, if you, during the course of this, if you do have any questions, feel free to use the chat window. Um, so find that now so you have it available. So you can type questions into the chat. And if you have um, questions just for general knowledge or issues where something isn't working, um, type it into the chat and, and Josh and I will monitor that, mostly him while I'm talking. And if there's any 
something really, really major, like my microphone cuts out, feel free to just unmute yourself and chime in with that. Okay. Um, if there's any questions right now, feel free to chime in. Okay. All right. So day one, day one, what we have to start out with is kind of just getting to know each other. So who are your presenters? Um, so this one's me. I don't know. Can you see my mouse? Can you see the yeah. mouse? I think I'm going to make the mouse bigger. Maybe I can. Maybe not. Maybe I won't. I won't make the mouse bigger. I can't find it. Um, so that's me. Um, and that's my adorable dog. I'm obsessed with my dog. Her name is Kaya. And what my job here at CSU is I'm an instructor out of the ESS department and I teach GIS. All I do is I teach GIS. I'm not a professor. I don't have a PhD. I don't have to do research. I don't have to like write grants. I just teach. And then I help people with fun projects like, I don't know, the, the cannabis one, that was pretty fun actually. We did a project with mechanical engineering where we figured out where in the country indoor cannabis has a really huge carbon footprint. That was a pretty neat project. And I just did analysis for it. Um, so I get to work on projects through uh, both ESS and also what's called the geospatial centroid. And that's kind of how this workshop came about. The geospatial centroid is a service center. It's a GIS service center. So we're like a resource for all of campus. And we have education and outreach and internships. And we do workshops like this one. We have events. When we're allowed to be in person, we have events like mapathons and seminars. Uh, right now, we don't have those, <laughs> they're all virtual. Um, but the Geospatial Center is a really, really great um, community on campus and they're fostering geospatial community. And as grad students, you guys can take advantage of the centroid. And if you have trouble with your mapping or analysis or you know, something spatial, you can go to the Geospatial Center. They have help desk services, which is actually what Josh does a lot of. And you can get help with your geospatial needs. Um, so that's all I'll say about myself. Josh, how about you chime in there? Hi, I'm Josh. Um, yeah, I am the help desk lead okay. at the Geospatial Centroid. I am also a grad student, um, much like all of you, in the Watershed Science Department in ESS. Um, I've been working in the GIS field for a about 16 years. Um, so it's given me quite a breadth of, of knowledge to work from. Uh, and I, I, my favorite thing to do is to help people. I love, I love mentoring and uh, really just helping you succeed is, is one of the greatest joys I have um, sharing knowledge for the betterment of all. Um, yeah. I have two beautiful children, a beautiful wife, um, I am not drinking a beer in my picture, though. Is that is that? I was going to crap that out. I was going to crap that out. Is that a sipping pretty? Um, no, it was oh. mountain time lager. It was such oh, a nice God. picture. I just took it last week. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's just a it's just a white can. It could be sparkling water. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, the the details of my life are quite inconsequential. Um, so, yeah, if you have <laughs> questions. Um, now or in the future, feel free to contact me or the Centroid. Chances are if you contact the Centroid, um, I will be the one helping you anyway. But <laughs> yeah, I say we uh, get to it. Okay. So normally when we do workshops, we go around the room and say names, which is kind of weird and a little bit timely on, on Zoom. Um, but I will give you, I want to give you guys the opportunity just to say anything, um, anything specific that you might want to be getting out of it, or if there's anything specific about you, like if you've never touched GIS before, I see a couple people are pretty new at it and that's fine. Um, so if you have anything that you'd like to share right now, feel free to unmute and, and share that. Okay, well, we did the survey, so I have a good idea of where you guys are at, so that's okay. Uh, yeah, and like I said, if you have any questions or comments, just feel free to add them into the chat. All right, let's move on. Uh, so before we begin, what we're gonna be doing today is obviously with a lot of data. So we'll be using spatial data or layers, and we have that data uh, for you available in two different places. 
So all of the data, including these slides, are all on this Google folder right here. So if you're looking at the slides for real, uh, you should be able to click that link and see them. But if you're in a remote desktop, you should be able to get to everything from this folder here, which I copied and pasted into the chat. But if you can't see the chat because you join late, we can recopy that in. So let's just take a quick look at what we have. So for today, we, we, we didn't get the data that you actually use. We were just trying to use some sample sort of natural sort of data. So what we have are um, land cover data a couple of different ways. We have land cover data as a raster, that's grid cell. We have land cover data as polygons. We have the same data clipped down to a smaller area just to make it easier to work with. We have this thing here called a DEM, that's a digital elevation model, and that's uh, elevation or terrain. So it's a, again, raster, we'll get to that in a second, but it's a raster made up of grid cells where every little pixel is the height above sea level. And so from there, you can look at terrain, you can do shaded leaves, you can calculate slope and aspect and water, like flow of water or view shed, things like that. We have some elk data, and these are actually GPS collar data from elk, uh, elk individuals in Rocky Mountain Park. These are several years old now. We have two tables, and then those tables were turned into points. So a lot of times you'll get information, you'll collect data, and you might have it in some type of tabular format. That tabular format might be XY coordinates, it might be addresses, it might be city and place names, it might be zip codes or things like that, but you can get tabular data onto a map. And so I think for a lot of you, you mentioned um, questions about survey and how to get survey results onto a map. Um, X, Y coordinates and place names are one way that you can do that. So we have a couple of tables with X, Y coordinates. We have NHD water bodies, so lakes and marshes. We have the boundary of Rocky Mountain Park. We have campsites, again, as a table of X, Y coordinates and a point layer. And then just some basic background layers, so roads, streams, trails, and then lakes, uh, different lakes, um, just to show you the difference and how the same type of layer can be depicted differently or how data from different sources can come in a very different format. So these are all the files that we have for today. And what we're looking at here, if you look up here, CLTL.GDB is a special file, a special container for, for spatial data called a geodatabase. And it's like a, a database, not a, not a true database, like Oracle or SQL Server, but it's a database for spatial da data, spatial layers, and you can only view these layers in the software ArcGIS Pro or QGIS or a couple other ones, but today ArcGIS Pro. So if you look in your folder, if you actually go and look in this folder right here in that workshop folder, you'll see CLTL.GDB, but it'll look like a folder and you won't actually see these names until you go into the software. So those are all the layers we have, and hopefully this will be enough to get you thinking about what data you might have and what questions you might have. And some, hopefully some of this more general data will relate enough to your own data that you'll be able to put things together and ask questions and, and get a lot out of this. So the data, if we plopped it all on a map, it would look like this, just not very pretty. But you can see streams, boundary, campsites, land cover, um, the lakes, couple different ways to show the lakes. And then if we were to zoom in, this is something like what you could do with these data. So here we have land cover polygons shown with a transparency over top of a shaded relief. So you can see the land cover, but also with the terrain behind it, which makes like a really cool map effect. Here we have lakes and the lakes themselves have a gradient. So in terms of symbology and visualization, there's a lot you can do to your maps to make them look a little nicer. And then we have streams and we have trails. So we're gonna learn how to create a map kind of like this and how to do these little effects. It's, sometimes you just need to show where your study area is and you need to show a basic map. 